we're gonna do a little bit of practice and we're gonna rig a blue marlin lure because um, the season's coming off Sydney. Um, so I've got here a Bonds Ballistic, um, beautiful lure. It's replacing one that got stolen by another fish uh, last season. Um, so we'll talk you through it and, and show you through step by step how I do it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this. Everyone does it slightly differently. I'm not saying my way is better or is right or wrong. It's just the way that works for me. Um, so you should do that. Um, first thing you'll notice is when you get your lure, you'll find, oh, I find that the skirts are often a little bit long. So a long skirt adds a lot of stability to the lure, but it also removes the action of the head. So what I like to do is I like to just grab a pair of scissors and trim my skirt down. So generally on this, you're probably going to take just over an inch off. And what I find is that gives the lure a bit more freedom and a bit more action once we're rigging. So if I just cut those out. Beautiful. And in terms of how much we're taking off, I just do it so that it looks right to me, so everything looks in proportion. So, that's, so that looks in proportion. Okay, so we, we've trimmed our skirt. Pretty happy with that length. Looks good. It's just going to give the lure a little bit more action. Um, I suppose it's probably best at this point just to give you an introduction. Obviously, we've got our lure. Need that to rig up the blue marlin. Uh, as well as that, you're going to need some basic tools. I've got some heat shrink here. Uh, with the heat shrink, I find this is a double layer, so it's got a layer of glue inside it. I find that using that gives it a lot more stiffness. Um, it also kind of seals up and waterproofs um, the connections that you're trying to seal. I've got some crimps for the wire. I've got some 900 pound cable, which is seven by seven stainless. Uh, I've got 500 pound leader here, which is just your bulk stuff. And I've got some leader crimps, which are just your four, four to 500 pound correspond. I've got some protective tubing, uh, which, is, which is all pretty standard stuff when you're rigging lures. And then obviously I've got crimps and proper wire cutters. Now, probably the last thing, my preference with rigging lures for basically any game fished, um, I, I run a single hook rig, stiff rig. Um, I've just had a lot more success. Uh, I find it's a lot simpler. It's a lot safer if you bring a tuner or something onto the boat. Um, and it, it's just, I've had a lot more success, so I run that. Um, lately I've been using these. These are a Gamagatsu tuner hook. Um, I, think they're, I think they're one of the better hooks on the market. Um, the reason I think that, they've got a ground down point which is pretty awesome, which means they're sharp out of the packet, um, so no need to sharpen them. Uh, they've got this great taper on the eye. You can see here that curve where the, the hook point's just pointing over the eye. I kind of like that. It's almost like a rolled-in thing. I find I get a lot better hookups with that and a, and a lot of hookups kind of that, that just sink once on that first bite instead of, instead of worrying about the hookup. The other thing they've got is they've got a really small barb compared to a lot of, a lot of other hooks. Uh, so you can see there. So... If you think about that, it's going to help your hook penetrate. So, super strong, great shape, um, sharp out of the packet, which is rare. I find it's pretty frustrating when you pay $25 for a hook and then you've got to spend uh, your next couple of hours grinding it down. Uh, so, nice. So, we'll be rigging with those. As I said, I run a, a stiff rig single hook. Uh, been running historically hook down, but I, I know that's a personal preference thing. I know that a lot of the guys now um, out of Hawaii and some of the top skippers up, up north here are starting to run that single hook up. Um, that's a preference thing. Uh, I think Brian Tony's kind of one of the leaders of that, um, and it makes sense. Uh, you just need to be aware when you're rigging if you're gonna rig it to have your hook down or your hook up, uh, because that'll affect the way that we do this. So with that in mind, let's, let's get started. Let's rig our lure. So we got here our cable, what we're going to do, key with fishing is always to reduce your waste because everything costs money. So what I like to do is I like to measure, we'll just cut the tag off that lure. Thanks Graham. So what I like to do, this, this lure's got a, a rubber stopper, so I like to measure 
from the back of that stopper to the bottom of the skirt. It's kind of easier said than, than shown while filming. Great. If you cut there, that should be a rough ballpark for how long we need our wire to be to make it all work. So there's a cut. So when we're doing it with our cable, what we'll find is you obviously buy your wire and your wire comes off a spool. So your wire has a natural twist in it. And when we're rigging these, I want that wire, that twist to go the same way with my lure so that it's all, all in line and all in sync, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep that in mind and I'm gonna consider that when I'm crimping. So taking my first crimp, Let's get put that on, on the end there, making sure that we're all set, we're all straight, that's all good. And I'm gonna take a little check and just, just kind of pinch the end to hold it in place. Just making sure we're all level and that's kind of been done. So what you see is that crimp is perpendicular to the curve of the wire. So I hope you can see that there. And what that's going to do is going to allow me, I might just tighten that up. That crimp, well that little compression to hold it in place. It's a better way to put it. So what that's going to do is I can meet, I can move this around, I can rig it all without too much of a worry. So this end is going to be my loop end at the top, so I'm just going to thread my plastic tubing on. Great, which hopefully is the right length, we'll see that in a second. Come back through. Great, so that's looking pretty good. And again, I might just put a crimp in there just to hold that all together while that's pulled flush. Cool, so, that, so that's why I'm crimped down. I'll note that when you're crimping with wire, unlike crimping to mono, you generally don't need that flare at the end. You can crimp right to the end of the crimps which is a critical difference. So, so what will happen is we'll crimp that the whole way through. Crimping right to the edge of the crimp. So these are small crimps. So I'm gonna to have to do three. So there we go, one on each end. So now I've done one on each end, I've done them the same way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over 180 degrees and crimp the middle one, just with the pliers facing the other way. And what I find is this does is it keeps your crimp straight. You might find that there's a slight bias in some of your pliers. And what that does is that keeps that crimp straight. And you can see there that we've got that crimp now. It's perpendicular to the curve in our wire. And that's a critical factor that'll come, that'll come in later. So now it's as simple with our hook end. Just gonna put the other crimp on. Now we're gonna thread that through. Now we need to give some consideration here to which way our hook's gonna go if we're running hook up or hook down just to get that curve in the wire right. So I'll just come in. Thread that through. Of course, I am going to just do a little holder just so that I can make sure that's all straight and how I want it exactly, so everything's exactly right, so now I don't have to worry about anything pulling through. And I can push that, push that down. 
So that's it. So I also don't want a, a huge loop, but I don't want it super tight there. So, so now what I'll do is I'll go and crimp that. And in a second, you'll be able to see how we've done with that curve of the wire. And again, I'm just going to flip it 180 degrees just to make sure there's no bias in that crimping and there's no curve. All right, great. So you can see that's all sitting. The hook's in line with the curve of it. I know a lot of people will say, well, it crimps up. That's all right. I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to put some heat shrink over it anyway and that's going to take all that out of it. Um, so that's our basic hook rig. So, what we might do is we'll go and thread, thread our heat shrink on there, just so it's there, and we'll come back and do the mono end. So you'll notice as well that I only used the protective tubing on that mono end. Um, realistically, I don't think it needs it if you've got something wrong and you, your 900 pound wire is snapping with the hook snapping at the eye, you've done something seriously wrong with your hook um, or your wire, so we're not worried about the protective tubing there. So, coming down to the other end, what we're going to do is just going to get out some of this. Now, if you're tournament fishing, you've got to be aware of all, all your leader lengths and everything like that, um, and they'll vary depending if you run wind ons. I, on the boat I'm fishing on at the moment, we're running wind-ons. So what I like to do is we've got our wind-on, which I think is about 15 foot. And then I like to make my lure leaders about 10 foot, um, which means that with a 12 foot tag pole, as soon as that swivel is near the rod tip, you should be tagging that fish. Uh, so it's just a little thing that we do. So it makes life easier. All right, great. So now we're just gonna thread that, thread that through our lure. Better if I don't smash it on the way through. We're gonna grab one of our crimps. Now these are mono crimps. You'll find that I was using one of these double sleeves for the uh, wire crimps. We're now going to use an alley crimp for the mono. And like we discussed before, we didn't have to flare the ends for the wire, the crimps on the wire, but we definitely 100% have to flare them uh, for the crimps on the mono. So I'm just going to take some of my tubing. Thread that on there. I'm going to grab my hook. All right. So, with your crimp to the mono, I find it's easier if you have the tubing down the tag end prior to pulling it tight. Now, a lot of people will burn this end. Yeah, it helps, um, it helps, it's, it's kind of a mental thing. If you're relying on a burnt end on your mono, um, there's something seriously wrong with your crimping. Um, so I, I don't really worry about it too much at this scale of tackle because a burnt end's not gonna do too much. Um, so again, we're pulling that up. And then we're just gonna pull all that around and pull it tight like that. And we're going to crimp that. Making sure that we flare the ends on that crimp. So again, I'm using small crimpers, so that'll be one either end. And then I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. And I'm going to do one in the middle. 
just to make sure that that's all straight. Beautiful, so that's looking pretty good. Now I probably should have done this before, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna fit. The lengths are gonna be right, so. There's that down. And we can see on our length now that that's all crimped up. Our hook's sitting perfectly with just the eye of the hook in the skirt, so we're tournament legal. And that hook just exposed down the bottom, the tip of that hook just exposed down the bottom. So, so that length is turned out perfect, so which is great, which is great. So the last thing we've got to do, and I know a lot of people, some people will get, uh, there's a bit of discussion about heat shrinking in terms of the mono end. Personally, I've never had a problem, so, so I just do it. Um, if you're concerned about heat shrinking up this top end because of the potential for the uh, heat to, to play and affect the mono, uh, you can always use electrical tape. And the way you do that is you just wrap around one way, the whole way up over the crimp and the connection, cut it off, and it's important to cut it, not to pull it and snap it, and then wrap back down the other way. Now, the reason that you do it both ways is to stop a bias coming in. It might look straight after doing it one way, but after running the lure for the day, you'll find that it comes in and it's kinked. And we really wanna make sure uh, that our lure is all running straight, especially with these slant face, but just with any lure in general, you want your lure to be running dead straight. So as we do that, so what I might do now is I'll go and I'll get my heat gun set up uh, and we'll come back and I will do the heat shrinking and that'll basically conclude uh, the rigging of our lure. All right. So got my heat gun set up now. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter. Um, you just need to make sure you keep that lighter moving pretty quick. So we'll get this guy on. Wait for him to get hot. These things do get really hot. What I'm gonna do is I wanna keep that connection as straight as possible. And I'm just gonna work back and forth over the top. Well, that heat shrink starts to shrink in. You see it's starting to go there. The whole time we're doing this, we want to make sure that we're keeping our rig straight. We're not bending anything. We're not done doing all that good work we did with making sure everything's aligned. Right. We're keeping everything straight. And we're keeping it straight until it cools as well. So we're not just like heating it, letting it shrink, and then, then putting it down just to go crooked on the table. We're going to hold it the whole time that it So we're just letting it cool now. Turn that off. Anyway, so we're just gonna finish off. So again, we're just gonna repeat with the motto. Got an alley crimp, it's gonna make our loop end. I like to use chafe tube here. Um, it's probably not really necessary unless you're gonna be yanking on it uh, really hard but we're taking off the rod tip generally and, and it's pretty rare that we, we'd need to do that before it tags in. So again, plastic tubing with a crimp, gonna come around. I'm not gonna worry about burning the ends for all the reasons I expressed previously. Um, and you'll see there, I like to put my tubing up that end. I've got my mono protruding by a couple of mils out the bottom. What I find is when I pull this around, We get a nice little loop there. I'm just gonna crimp that. And that'll complete our rig. Making sure to flare the edges. So 
So one, one, one end, one at the other end, removing the flare. And so it's looking like that. And then I'm going to twist it and do the middle crimp at 180 degrees just to make sure that crimp's all dead straight. You'll see that crimp stays perfectly straight, which is nice. That's what we want. So that's basically our finished product. So if I run this down through, you'll notice this skirt's got a stopper. So we're going to click that in to the stopper, which will help us run our hook. There we go. And you can see our hook's just protruding from the bottom of the skirt there. And that is a beautifully rigged blue marlin lure that I would run every day of the week. You can see everything's in a line. It's neat. It's tidy. Uh, the heat shrink's protecting all our connections. It's also great to let you know if you've got a bite. Um, as I said, I'm running a, a stiff rig single. This, there shouldn't be a marlin off Sydney that this, this rig can't handle. Um, I fish heavy, I find it doesn't make a difference if you've set your lures properly, the leaders are all out of the water anyway. And we're fishing for that big fish, we're not fishing for all those little fish. So when that, that real once in a lifetime fish comes, I wanna know that all my gear out there can handle it. So hence the 500 pound leader, the 900 pound cable and, and these, these heavy hooks. So just something to think about. Um, again, check out these. Chira Sift hooks from Gamagatsu. The tips on them are nice. They look great. Uh, I love the shape of them. Uh, and they've proven to be real fish catches. So, hope you enjoyed. Signing off.